Hi, welcome to a Watts 4000 video walkthrough on refactoring. And before I start talking about this project, I'm going to fork it. So we'll get that going. And then um, I want to take a look at the, the project requirements here. So one of the things that we are going to be doing in here is using an API. So we've used the DataMuse API before. We're going to be using the openweathermap.org API. So you want to go out and sign up for that. We'll just open up that link. And if you create an account, you'll be able to sign in. And then when you click on API keys, you'll be able to get the key that you need in order to make the API calls. So, so those are the two things to start out with. Fork the API and sign up for the open weather map. And once we have that, we can kind of take a look at what we're going to be doing in this project. I've got a completed solution here that I want to run for you. Uh, before I look at any of the requirements, just so you can kind of get a feel for how this works. So I can enter a, a city name, <clears throat> and there can be multiple cities in the world that have Paris. And you can see there's France, there's U.S., and these latitude and longitudes kind of let you know that these are in different places. But we're not too concerned about which Paris it is for this purpose here, we're, we're, what we're going to see is that we're going to have a couple of different views of weather. And starting at the top, we get a list of cities. And then we can drill down on a given city. We can go look at its current weather. And when we're looking at that, we have the option to either go home to search for another city or go to a five-day forecast. So we have current weather and five-day forecast that we can kind of toggle back and forth. And so. Um, what, what you're seeing here are three views. We have this forecast view, we have the current view, and then we have the home view, which is just our route. So let's see how that works and why we might need to refactor. One thing you might notice is that these views kind of look the same. I mean, they have different information, but you can see like this view of the current and the five-day forecast kind of have a similar look to them. They have some similar looking data. And that's where the refactoring is going to come in. That's one of the places. But let's take a look at this drawing. I've got, the idea here is I've got two hierarchies I'm going to be working with. The one is with the data. So I, I'm going to see that I'm going to have three different APIs. So they have different endpoints. One is a find, which finds me all the cities according to my query. And then I'm going to be able to click on a city, and based on its city ID, I'm going to be able to look at either weather, which is the current, or forecast. And I've cut out a little bit of what you get back, the JSON for these calls. So with find, we get a list of city objects. So we have the names, and we have some information about that about the cities, the, the coordinates, um, and then. For the current weather, we get a weather object, which is an array. So there could be one or more. And generally, there's just one for current. And then we have some main information, which describes how, how the, how, what the weather is like right now. And then for the forecast, we also have a main. And then we have, an, we have also another an array of weather. So these, these are essentially similar structures. It's kind of flipped over. Here we have weather main, main weather. but they have a similar data structure, and that's going to help us when we go to do some refactoring if, um, on that. So that's the data hierarchy. And then if we look at the component hierarchy, right now when we look at our code, you're going to see that we have three views. So these are going to be, we'll be able to look in the router and see those are city search, forecast, and current weather. And it turns out that there's code that is duplicated in each of these. And that's the code that we want to refactor out. So we're going to have, find we have a weather conditions, we have a weather summary, and we have an error list that we, it's essentially the same in all of them. And we want to be able to just pass the relevant data off to these and let them render. And you're going to see that essentially we're going to, we're going to be sort of extending HTML because these things will come out, these components, we'll, we'll be able to introduce them into our um, code as tags, 
and then we'll be able to set attributes to hand off data to them. And that's going to use the component props that we saw many exercises ago when we initiated uh, when we initiated our own application from scratch. But you're going to get to see how that works in this. So let's now go take a look at the code and see what that looks like. So let's see, I'll go back to my forked my forked copy of refactoring and I'll grab the link and I'll head off to my my terminal and I will clone this. All right, and then we'll open that up in Visual Studio Code. So what? 4,000. It's 4,000 refactoring. And the first thing I'll always do in here with it, because it's view, is I'm going to run the NPM install to get all of my modules. Oh, let's see. Oh, npm, just npm install. Uh, and then I'm going to start looking at this code. So I'm in my source directory. That's where my always my code is located. Um, when I'm coming to a new application with a router, I find it useful to start there. This kind of gives me an overview of how this is set up. So you've got an application, and we'll, we'll run this and see what you get without doing any work. So we'll run serve, we'll get the development server going. And we'll just see what we've got, because obviously there's a lot of code in here, and what is it doing for us? So we get our initial page, and I'm going to want to um, I'm going to want to turn on the inspector, because this will let me know when I hit an error. That's where I don't have code. So I'll try and do my search, and right off the bat I get this error. So if you see this error, it's looking for a token. 401, it's, a, it's an authorization error. That's because I haven't set up my API key. So I, I need to get that going. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what kind of code we got, because we're going to get to that. We have three components that we're importing, the search, the current weather, and the forecast. And then you'll notice that in the current weather and forecast, we have in our path, we expect to find a number, a city ID. And that will be interpreted for us through route params. So when there's a number in the URL, we'll be able to pull that out of the route params. So here's our, our, our uh, data hierarchy, basically, is we do our search. And then we click on something that has a number in it. And we can then go off and get the current weather for that city or the forecast. So that kind of helps. So now I would expect in my views directory to see these three. And yes, they're there. So we've, we've got those already started. Do I have anything in components? Not yet. So I will be creating components as I refactor data out of these views. I'm not going to create any more views. You might say, well, why don't I just put everything in one view? Why even mess around with all these views and these different components? I could just put everything in one view, and I can use VIF and <clears throat> VSHOW to control what, what the user is seeing. I don't need to bother with all this. And the fact is that you could do that. But it would be very difficult to maintain, and you wouldn't be able to share your components. And um, you would end up copying code many times in that one file. So in general, we, we want to try to get our files as small as possible. It makes them easier to, to code, maintain, and test. So there really is a reason for this. And then also, if you're in a big organization, you might write a component that's really useful to somebody that works in another part of the organization. And this way, you can share it. Whereas if it's all bound up in one giant piece of code, really no one else is going to want to touch it. All right, so we're going to be creating some components, but they're not there now. And then we also have, um, let's see, we have in our city search, which is where we're starting. We have a lot of code written. In fact, we only have instructions to make summary, to make weather summary and weather data into child components, which is our refactoring step. But our code's not working, and the reason why is because we aren't authorized because we need to put our app ID in here. So the first step in this is to grab that FI, that app ID, which you know we we we've got by signing in. It's free and pasting it into our, uh, let's see what happened there, 
we want to paste that. It's a string. It's going to go in as a string into our code. And let's just pull that over. And we can actually do that for all of them. And that should get our code running. But I want to take a look at one more thing before I really start coding, which is I want to understand my data better. So this is all going to do some rendering based on the code that's provided. But before I even try to mess with code and see how everything is named and whatnot, I, I have a tool called Postman. And you can download this for free. So Postman, and what Postman is, it kind of looks like a browser. You have, um, you have this uh, ability, you can paste in an API. So this is not a URL that you would run necessarily in the browser. It's, it can be run against, against um, any third-party API. And it gives me the ability to set up the data and then call for it and see what it looks like. So this is how I got my snapshots. So in the case of this um, weather API, the really important part of this, let's just take this out right now, is we have this base here, right here, the base um, call, and then putting this final verb on the find gives us a full endpoint for a search. And this is all in the documentation. And then once I have that, I can start adding the various uh, parameters. So I can, um, for instance, let's go back to current weather because we're on the find. So you'll see in, in our code that um, we, are gonna, we are calling Axios on this endpoint. We have a units, which is imperial. So we'll add that to postman units and imperial. Okay, and let me let me refresh this. Let's see. Okay, so we need yes, we have unit, and we need to grab our key. So we'll grab this key, and it's got. You have to use the exact name that they provide, and so they call it app ID, app ID, all capital letters. So we'll put that in there, and then we need our query, which they want you to use Q. You can see we've used. Um, actually, we're going to look at the city search. So we have Q units and app ID. And for Q, we've been using Paris. And you can see that as I enter these on a get, all on a get, all of the values that you hand off on a go into a query string, which is which is key value pairs that follow a question mark. So this is just standard uh, HTTP request. And each one of the key value pairs is separated by the ampersand. So we have looks like that units didn't get in. There we go. So we have units equal imperial and app ID equals blah 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 and Q equals Paris. The order shouldn't matter. So once I've got that all set up, this is exactly what will happen inside your code. We'll put this all together and then when you do a send, it'll go out to that third party API and grab the data. And so by doing that, I now can have a really good look at the data structure that's returned. And I would generally recommend this with doing this with every um, every API that you work with to, because it, you don't have to write any code to do it, but you can get a good look at things. So you can see that for calling this the find, I get back an array that is a list of all of the cities, all of the cities that it keeps track of found. Like if I change this to Seattle, um, you're just going to turn out that there is, I believe, only one Seattle. So let's see, if we look at our list, now you can see this, this is a big object, has a lot of things in it, but it, but there's only one list. You can see there's some subarrays, so there's this weather array inside of it, but there's this single array named list, and it has one big object describing Seattle weather. So um, you know, but if I go back to Paris, you're going to see that 
that you're going to get this same list, but you're going to have lots and lots of objects. So, so using this is really helpful. And then the other thing is we can also look at our other endpoints. So we have the find endpoint that works for um, that works for for finding cities, but then we have a weather endpoint that works for finding a specific city. So if I grab out of this list, this is a list of cities, if I grab one of the IDs and I put it in here, let's just check the, it's called ID and then we can keep the units, so ID, and so, there, so each endpoint has different requirements. So now I've got same unit, same app ID, but I'm calling the for weather, so it's single cities weather, and I'm giving it an ID. And when I call that, once again I get back, and here just just just, just for this one city, I get back a, a weather array, and then I get back a main. And these are going to be the main things that we are going to be looking at in our code. This is the data that ends up on the screen. And then finally there is a forecast endpoint. And that also uses a city ID and an app ID, so we'll run that. And it also gets back uh, a list, and in that list we get main and weather. So we get multiple items here because for a forecast there can be multiple forecasts. So it's not a trivial bit of data that you're working with, but I think if you can run this and have a look at it, and then um, have a look at this diagram. So right here you'll see, so we have this find endpoint. We hand off city ID to get weather and forecast. And for weather, we, we, we get a weather, a weather array and a main. And for forecast, we get also a weather array and a main, although we tend to get more items in the weather array for a forecast than in the current weather. So that is our, that, those are the structures we're working with and our goals as you'll see are we're going to try to pull out that API key because it's the same in every call, pull that out into a component or something that we can share easily and then create view components to render these uh, weather conditions and weather summary and you'll see an error list. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now all of the code is located in this project uh, write-up. So we're going to work through this um, and the first thing that they want us to do is we're going to refactor out this some of we're going to refactor out this base URL so this doesn't include the full endpoint, the verb. Um, and we're going to wrap it up, we're going to encapsulate it with the app ID and the units because we just use those over and over again. And you can read about interceptors in the Axios documentation, but this is a way that we can, um, as we make a call out to this um, base URL, we can have it fill in the app ID and the units and then we don't have to copy this code everywhere. So the way that we're going to make this available, I'm just going to copy this right now, is we're going to create a common directory and inside of that an API.js file. So let's do that. We're in source and we're going to create a folder called common and in there we'll create a file called api.js and we'll just paste that in there and then we'll want to put our own app ID in there. So I'm just going to go grab one of these by the way, since we have this all set up, even though it's not refactored, our code should run now. So let's try that out. Just getting that API key in there um, should make this run. So we are actually running now, and you could say, okay, I'm good enough, I'm done. But no, we're going to refactor, and um, we'll see how that works. So starting with setting up this interceptor, we've got our API um, base URL. And then we're going to paste in this API key. So I'm just using copy and paste. I'll just put that in there. And then take a look at the instructions. We're going to use an import into each one of our um, each one of our 
views. And the import is simply we give the location of the file. We don't have to put .js on it. It, it assumes that. And then we give a name to the object that we're importing. So this, again, we, we exported this object API. And that means that when we import it, we can look for that API there. So at the beginning of our, where we do our import Axios, we can also do an import of our API. So we now have that information, but we need to do a little bit of adjustment on how we call, how we make the call. And you can see down here, the, the adjustment occurs in our get cities. So this is, this is the function that, you know, up here, get cities. We had our submit for our form calls the get cities function. And we're going to change how we make this call now because we're going to use the interceptor rather than copying all of that. So if we just take this this part, this is the only part that will change. I'll put these side by side for a minute so you can see how they look. So we're going to get rid of this, the old Axios get. And we're going to instead say an API get, and we're going to give it the verb. Now, if there if the API didn't have any more, if the base UR was essentially the full endpoint, we, we could just leave an empty string there. But we do have a find, and we're going to add on to the imperial and the API. We're going to add our, our query. So this is the refactor for, for this file. And we're going to want to do the same thing in all of our files. So we might as well take care of that and then test that out. Well, let's go test this out and make sure that that change worked. So if I go home and I enter Paris, Yes, so this is now working using the interceptor. And the next thing I want to do then is something similar. So I want to grab this for current weather and do the import right here. And then I'm going to remove this Axios get. And I'm going to use a similar, only this time it's going to be called something a little different, but it's essentially going to look a lot like that. So you can see that here the endpoint for weather, for current is weather, and we're going to be passing off the ID. And you can see that we are able to pull that ID out of the route params because, because of the way that we set up the router, um, we can actually pull that out. And that route ID uh, got handed off in the search. If we look at this, let's see, if we look at our link, we can see here the router link when we went to current weather, we used a vbind on the two for the router link, and that allows us to hand off this object. And the object contains the name and a list of params, which is just one, the, the city ID. So that's how we were able to hand that off to the weather. And then when we get to the weather page, current weather, we can just pull that value out of route params. So that's how we can uh, pass that data on using a router param. And so that should get, that should be, looks like we have an error there, um, created, okay. Oh yes, so the problem I've got here is I don't need a function, um, and the reason why is because I am actually in the created function. So this is new too. What happens is that when I click on that router link and I open up this view, I can, if I have a created function, when this view is first created, the first time, it will run the code in this created function. So I don't need, I don't have like a submit button or anything like that on here. It just calls this function by virtue of loading the view. 
So now I should be able to get to the current weather. And let's just format that. And I'll go check on the current weather. So if I go to Paris and I view current weather, and there it loads up. So you can see there's a couple sections to it, and we'll be getting to those. Um, and let's just do the same thing for our forecast. So once again, we're going to, I'll just grab that import. It's going to be the same import. So bring in that API information, but we're going, and again, we have a created because we're, we're routing to it through a link. And what we need to do is remove this full call here. And definitely don't leave this code around, just delete it. I'm just leaving it for comparison. And then um, we can make a similar call as we did in here, then API get. And that fits in there. And again, these we are using Axios, so we've got some we've got promises and we've got a then for the success and a catch for the error. And in this case, it's forecast that we are going to call. And once again, because it's routing and we're using that city ID, we'll just pick that up from the route parameter. So now we should have our forecast working. So if I go to five day forecast, yes, and I get whatever happens to be in that array for this particular city. All right, so those are some, those are, this is the beginning of our refactoring. And let's just take a look at where we are. So now we've, we've completed sharing our API and endpoint base URL across all of our views. Now we want to look at pulling some of the code out from each of the views that happens to be the same and setting up some new uh, child components to, to display them. So let's take a look at that. So um, first thing is we want to break up the weather summary into a child component. And let's just go take a look at where that's being used. So starting in city search, we go out a note in a to-do saying this little chunk of code is basically a weather summary. And if we look in each one of these, do we have the same thing? So let's go look in here. Yes, we've got a weather summary here. Looks a little chopped up due to the formatting. And we've also got one in here. So we can see there's another weather summary. So what they're saying here is that, and it's been coded for you. You might want to take a look at how they're setting it up. They've got it, uh, some images. They're in a V4 on the forecast, um, taking the weather data. Weather data is what they're calling the results. Grabbing the list, iterating through it, and putting out the different sections of weather data. So what we want to do here is set up a new component that can um, that can be used in all of these views and just have it uh, just have it once but be able to include it with just a tag basically so <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing I'm just going to avoid some typos by grabbing this um, let's see if I can just grab this <clears throat> I just want to grab that contents. So this is going to end up being my weather summary component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and make make a new component called weather summary and this one will go under components. So I'll make a new file and call it weather summary and it's going to be a view file. And I'm just going to paste in what we've got for that and it looks like it is giving me the missing key so let's add a key and because all of this data has uh, has IDs I'm going to use the ID we'll see if that will work here um, so what we're going to end up doing is this code 
will use props. And what that does is that means that I can pass off data as an attribute of the tag that is created by this component. So I can hand off weather data. I can hand off props as weather data. It'll come in as an object and then I should be able to uh, look for weather summary in weather data and grab the ID and um, and then display weather summary main. So we might take a look at this in the a little bit to see what this looks like in the debugger coming in in DevTools. But let's just take a look and see if how this is going to work in our city search. So we're being asked to replace this with the weather summary. And you can see here that we can do that. Once we have that weather summary, we need to um, we need to declare that component down in our code by using the components key. So if we go down to city search and see we have our methods and after that we're going to put our components. Oops, we got an extra comma there. And what we're doing is we're saying weather summary. I think we need to import this up here too. Let's see. So import weather summary from at, let's see, that's quote, single quote, at, and it's now in components, weather summary. Okay. Now weather, the weather summary component is available, and then we register it as a, so that it can be a child in this component. And because it's going to end up in our template, we don't want to rely on mixed cases or, or cases at all. We, we tend to normalize um, something like this, some kind of camel case, into a dash. So we use the kebab casing. So everything's lowercase and we separate um, words with a dash. But now that we have that registered, we should be able to take out our initial code and I just want to grab this weather summary and you can see that it's going to hand off the city this is the one this is the main view the, the home view where we're listing all the cities and so we've got the city pulled out in our v4 we've got a city in there and yeah we've pulled it out of the list we're calling it city where we can grab the weather and hand that off to the summary. So let's take a look and see if that worked. So if we go back out here to home, this is in home. Yes, so we're getting our summary. And then the other thing that we want to do is to, and our summary, you know, I'm not seeing city name and country, but I think, I don't think we have that available anymore. I think that they changed the I think they changed the API and we don't actually get to look at that. So that's something I probably should correct because they have changed. They used to allow you to do a search by city and state, city and country. Now really you just get city and you have to kind of use the the latitude and longitude to look up things like city and country. Let me just take a look at where that's happening. So we have the router link to current weather. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, we have city and country. We do have that. But we don't know the state, so we don't have that. But yeah, so we have city and country. And then we have our links to current, our link to current weather. And then we have our weather summary, which comes out looking like, you know, it, it's an icon. If you look at weather summary, it just ends up giving us an icon. And then, which we pull out of the data, and then we have an alt tag on that. And then we have weather summary main, which is just something like that. So that's our weather summary. And we now need to apply that to each of our 
each of our current weather and our forecast. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly without you having to watch me type and then come back. All right, so what I did was I, for current weather and weather summary, I imported the weather summary, the new component, into the script. And then I went and created a components key and registered the weather summary there. I did the same thing in the forecast. I imported the weather summary at the top in the script and I imported the components. And so now if I look back at the instructions, I'm ready to set up the current weather. So you can see weather summary looks like an HTML tag and then I'm able to bind the weather data right into it and that will get picked up in its props and let's just we'll follow that through so current data current weather I can now re replace that in the to do okay and then I can actually remove this particular code the code that sort of refactoring out and so what I'm saying is that when I call weather summary its its weather data will receive this components weather data dot weather so weather data has been fetched from the API and the dot weather is being handed off to the weather summary and if you look at the props that's the name in props is weather data and so it's going to receive that and it will create um, it will render that code for that for that summary uh, the same thing um, happens in forecasts. Let's take a look at that. Data may have a different name. So here we're going to look at adding the uh, the tag for weather summary, but in this case it's in the forecast where we call the, the happens to have been named forecast in our v4 loop. So we need to reference the data that we're handing off as forecast weather. It'll still be bound to the weather data in the weather summary. So all these names can be a little confusing and I think you kind of have to stop and kind of take a look and follow through. But if you think about what we're trying to do, we're, we're trying to take data that we've gotten out of the, this, the endpoint on this forecast API, we've pulled out the part that we want and then we're binding it to the weather data that the weather summary knows about. So that we're able to make our components talk to each other. And that's what we are in it, and we're doing it from a parent child. So in your reading, you'll read about you you can use props to hand off data from a parent to a child. You can't go the other way. So if you need to let a if you need a child to let a parent know about something, you need to do it with an event. You need to admit an event. And we don't really have that going on here. This is all going pushing data down the DOM. So we're pushing data from parent to child. All right, so that takes care of one of our chunks of data. If you if you look back at our drawing, we've done the common API, we've done weather summary, we still need to do weather conditions and error list. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we finished the weather summary. Now we're going to look at another chunk of code that we can refactor, which is what we're going to call the weather conditions. So we have a a, a uh, data uh, list here, a dictionary type list for our weather conditions and let's see what that looks like in here. So we have a to do to make the DL of weather data be a child component. So this section is going to end up getting replaced by a new a new tag created by a new component. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to create this component. And you can see all they've done is copy the DL into the template and then set up a props for it called conditions that expects an object. And once it gets that handed off, it can pull the humidity, temperature, max, and min out. So I'm going to grab this code here, and I'm going to create a new component in the components folder called weather conditions. So we open a new file, weather conditions conditions and it's a view file 
and this basically is going to encapsulate this little chunk of this little listing of weather conditions and in order to make that work I'm going to again import that so import weather conditions from at components weather conditions. All right, and then I'm going to register that down in the component section and give it a kebab name weather conditions. Okay, and now I'm ready to use a, um, a weather conditions. Uh, I'll be, I'm ready to use the weather conditions tag and hand off the data that I need. So let's take a look. We want to, so if we're in, we can just grab weather conditions and we're going to bind the main so we we bind the city dot main so in here we can use our new weather conditions and that means we don't need this list anymore and again you'll want to delete all of this code that you're refactoring out now let's take a look if that worked okay so we're going to go visit the home and just make sure we don't have any errors go to the console and just run this and it looks like we got it so that looks good so the next step is to do the do this um get these tags into our other um our other view components so i'm going to do that again and then i'll come back and show you what i've done all right so we in the forecast um just as i did in city search i imported weather conditions first and then i registered it as a component, gave it a kebab name so I could use it in the template, and then I bound it to forecast.main. So forecast is what we're calling our list of weather conditions, and then dot .main is the object out of the data that I want. Similarly, in the current view, I first imported weather conditions and then I registered it as a component and gave it a kebab name and then I brought it in and bound it using the weather data main so weather data is what I called the weather data in current weather so let's take a look and see if this is running okay so let's go back to home and I'll search for my favorite city here and there we go we have Paris we can view current city we can view current weather so that's going to be our single forecast and then the five day forecast we're going to see um, the the five days and then many different time periods throughout those days all right so it looks like we've got that all stitched together correctly let's take a look and see if there's anything left so we have um, set up oh error list so let's take a look at error list all right so for error list if we look at you know we have the potential to make an error anytime we're calling third-party api so anytime you're fetching data you definitely want to be thinking about errors and it just so happens that we have a similar section of code in every one of our um, views that is looking for these errors um, and so um, what we want to do is to replace those with a tag to a component. So first of all, we need to create an error list component. And once again, I'm rather than trying to type all this, but I would definitely recommend taking a look at this. This is, you can see that this template is just pulling out that, that HTML that we've been repeating and then we have a props which takes an error list array so you can see that right there and so if we just hand off whatever error list we've accumulated on our call um, this little bit of code will render it for us so let's make another component this one called 
error list view. And again, these all go in components because we're not routing to them. And for this one, I think I'll just use index and we'll set up our key. Especially when you're using child components, you really want to be sure to key these v4 loops, you know, just in case. What if you had it, it would really only matter if you had two of them on the same page, but still good practice. Um, so there's our our little section, and it's just the it's just the div where we are iterating through the error list and outputting out outputting the errors. So once we have that, then once again we go back in and we can import register and add a tag. So let's say we import error list from at, and again the at is just a shorthand for source components error list. And then we want to come down here and register. This is often the thing that that gets forgotten and you can't figure out why it's not rendering and yes just register the components in a components object so error list and then once we have that we can track down this little section here comment it out and put in an error list and we will hand off to it just double check in here. We want it to we don't want it. It's going to be the same in all of them because we've named our um, so we have our error list. We're going to bind errors. As long as we've named in data our errors array the same, then we're going to end up with the same tag and handing off the same data. And again, this is an object, you know, the vbind binds objects. All right, I'm going to go do that in my current weather. Um, so I'll do that very quickly and then review it. So in looking at current weather, I found something that might trip you up. So again, I, I come in here and I import my error list and I register the component. And then I go to replace it with my new tag. And I can see that I have a vif here, which my error list starts with a vif, so it's it's vf, and I, that's what I want to replace in current weather. So I'm basically going to put my error list in there. But then I see that, that there's an else there. And since this note doesn't have a vf in it, this else doesn't have anything to, there's no context for it. So I could either just get rid of that, or the other thing I could do is I could take this out and put it in my error list. Since I have a vf here, I can actually add it right in there. So that's one of those little anomalies that you could come across when you're coding, is that somebody didn't do it exactly like the way that you wanted to refactor it, like you thought everything was exactly the same and it wasn't. And then you just kind of have to make a, a choice, an executive decision. Should I keep the loading or should I just get rid of it for everybody? And so I'm going to keep it and we'll see how that works. It, it, um, it may be annoying and I may decide to take it out, but I kind of have to do, um, I kind of have to make some choice there. So let's format that. So now I've just got my error list and then in my forecast, I still need to do the import. Let's see, error, error list from at components. Error list. Okay. And then down here, got error list register list. And then finally I'm going to come up find out where I want to replace this and this one has a loading too so I'll just take that all out and I'll stick my oops don't want that. You want to just go I tend to just grab something that has worked when I'm doing this. Um, so we have the forecast and now we've got our error list in there. 
All right, let's take a look and see if this is working. So I'm going to go out to my dev server, and looks like there is a problem there. Invalid prop error list expected got array. Let me go take a look at that. So we're testing our error list, and we're seeing this error list got array. And so we're kind of wondering what's going on with the code. And if you look at the error list, you can see we've initialized it with, it looks like an array. It looks like an empty array. And if the thing is, this is a situation where you really have to pay attention to the docs. So if you look at the docs, you can see that when you're accepting props, you, you don't use like you don't use the symbol for an array or the symbol for an object you actually use the type and so if we're going to give it a name we need to use the type array and with that we should be able to render so let's go back and see if we can clear that up yes so now we are able to do and that loading is showing up there, and you know I'm not really sure that I like it that much, especially on that first page. It looks kind of funny, and I think what I'm going to do is just take it out entirely. So sometimes you have to kind of try that out and just decide for yourself, do I really like it? So I'll just take that out and just see how that looks. So now when I'm at home, and I might try to find, if I really wanted that to show up on one of those other views, I might set up a separate little bit of template that could test for something and do that. And you'll see in another project later on we're going to be doing visual enhancement where you can set up actual spinners and things. But for now I'm going to leave that out and then I'll just go to these different views and everything looks good and this looks clean. So I think I'm good here um, and again you want to do a massive amount of cleanup here. You don't want to leave any of this old code that you've been refactoring. Sometimes while I'm working on it, I'll just leave it there as a comparison so I can look at it. But I don't, I definitely don't want to leave that around. And in fact, I think that's the final thing is clean up extraneous files. You'll notice that in this project, there is a test search file. So often when you're starting out, you might just uh, set up some code to go in and run your queries and just to test it out. Well, you don't want to keep that, so you'll definitely just want to delete that. You can just go ahead and delete that file. And if there's any other test files, get rid of them. And then, of course, remove all the commented out code. And, and this is something I'll be looking for because we want to keep this really clean. A lot of times you think, well, well, during during an editing session, it's OK to kind of keep it around to remember what you were doing. But um, you've got GitHub, and that will give you the ability to diff with older versions and so you don't need to really keep old code around. That's just not something that you want to do. Um, so I think that we now have a working application. It's been fully refactored according to our plan. And then of course in this project you have all of the files spelled out. So if you have any typos or anything's not working correctly, you might go in and take a look at that. You also have some stretch goals, so you can take a look at, at that too. There is a date formatter in here. Let's see, it's in one of the, some date formatting code. Let's see where we have that. Here we go in the forecast you have a filter and these this is talked about in your write-up you're not required to do anything with this in the code but you might want to take a look at that so filters allow you to use that pipe and so you can see oh, let's see, let's see. Pipe. oops lots of new one um let's do shift pipe. so there's that doesn't look right. Um, that pipe is used to do, let's see, here we go. The pipe right there is used for filtering. And so what that little symbol pipe in a template means is that 
call this filter function. So if I go then down to my code and find that filter function, it's going to take the variable that I that I'm piping in forecast date, and it's going to run it through this function. And this function is set up to figure out the date based on the timestamp. So this is um, some code that is repeated in the forecast and let's see what else also in the current. No, I think that's just a symbol. I don't think that's anything that you that you're gonna need. Um, but the piping is allowing you on the forecast to create these formatted dates and times. And there's a thought that you might use that in other places. So you could actually pull just this function out and just like we did for the API, you know, so that we've had two ways to refactor. We've had making child components, but we also have this ability to just export a const, which is to export, it could be a function, it could be a, an object. So you could create, a f as a stretch goal, you could create a function and then you could refer to that in your filter. But anyway, there are ways that you can, you know, continue to improve this code. But for to meet the requirements, I think you you basically just want to get the um, the weather conditions, the weather summary, and the error list refactored out, as well as the API with the Axios interceptor pulled out. All right. Well. Let's see, the, the last thing that we want to do then is to build this and then we can push it up to GitHub and create our rendered view. So we're building it to docs and then, you know, like I do sometimes like to, before I push it, uh, go ahead, find the docs and run the static file with open live server. It was just a second test just to see how things are working with the static files because they're not this exactly the same as what you might have used there. All right, um, that looks good. So I'm going to now git and dot git commit hm code and build for refactoring. Git push. And we'll push that up and then I'll use my handy open and GitHub project to take me out there. And this is the SU web dev. I want to go out and I want to set it up with GH pages on the docs branch. And I'm using a DNS name, so I'm going to enforce HTTPS. And we'll just wait for that to publish. Again, it'll turn green, and we should be able to view that. All right, and there is current weather by day forecast. Um, okay, I think we're good now. And um, let's just double check that we, yes, that's all fine. We've got. So what this comment is, is that we actually, the, the weather service runs over HTTP and we're running HTTPS and Chrome doesn't really like it when you use assets that are not encrypted when you're encrypted. I'm not going to worry about that here. I suppose you could go and take your HTTP off, but I'd rather leave it encrypted and just get the mixed content error. So I think we're good here. Um, Hope you have fun with this and this is important work sometimes it can be difficult it really does help to draw a picture for yourself and just kind of keep that by your side to keep you focused on what you're trying to achieve all right